Thank you very much, Madam President. We live in some pretty interesting times. Up is down, down is up. This warped sense of reality that teaches two plus two equals five is depicted in the dystopia, as depicted in the dystopian novel 1984 by George Orwell is becoming mainstreamed in our society. Teachers are being lectured by students in mandatory professional development courses. And in these lectures, teachers are being told what personal pronoun they should be using when addressing students. At a time when students are graduating without an ability to read their diploma, don't you think professional development should be focused upon improving instruction in reading? Shouldn't we pr be promoting American history, grammar, spelling, math, not socialist propaganda? The Ministry of Truth has been so successful at distorting reality, we can't even agree with the scientific fact that XX chromosome pair is female and XY chromosome pair is male. Last week, the senator from the 23rd District attacked Bishop Ira Combs, an appointee to the Civil Rights Commission, because of his biblical view of marriage and sexuality, which also happens to be a scientific view. I find it hypocritical that the same people who profess to promote tolerance and anti-bullying initiatives have a pattern of being intolerant and bullying others who don't share their views. You see, Bishop Ira Combs is under attack because his views are not welcome in this tolerant society envisioned by those who push identity politics. They do not want a diversity of views. They especially do not want to tolerate any biblically based views. Bishop Combs is not the only person of faith under attack by anti-religious bigots. My friend, Pastor Jeremy Shasal of Metro City Church is also under attack. Why is Jeremy under attack? Well, as a pastor, he had the audacity of inviting teenage girls for a faith-based discussion over LGBT thoughts as part of an unashamed identity workshop. This workshop is meant to help young girls struggling with thoughts that they are trans, bi, gay, or other. And in response to his invitation, people are threatening to kill his family and burn his church down. Pornographic images have been posted to the church website. You see, there is a movement to silence, silence the voices of people of faith in our society. This movement is part of a larger pattern of growing religious hostility in our nation. See religioushostilities.org for, for the latest list of examples. Rather than unify us under the principles of faith embedded in our founding documents, there is a growing trend towards identity politics that seeks to divide Americans into specific groups. Make no mistake, identity politics is simply a divide and conquer strategy devised by those who wish to fundamentally transform America into George Orwell's dystopian society. Why was there such a backlash against Bishop Combs and Pastor Shasow? Those who seek to fundamentally transform America want them silenced. It turns out that the so-called professors of tolerance who are attacking people of faith are the least tolerant of all. I know what it's like when someone wants you silenced for your views. I know what it's like to be bullied. I know what it's like to have the full light of your views condensed into a false pinhole. That's why I believe it is time to take a stand. It is time to be vocal in defense of those simp who simply have a different opinion. I took an oath to support both the U.S. and Michigan constitutions. These social compacts have explicit provisions that secure the rights to free speech and religious conscience. That is why we all need to defend people of faith who have the courage to speak truth in love on life's most sensitive subjects. Silence is not acceptable.